This is The Party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right, P-O-D-D-Y. Welcome back to the wild world of women. It's the Trim Healthy Podcast, and uh, I'm with two of the wildest, in my opinion. Hey, I have a question for, uh, for these wild women. <laughs> um, I'm full of my yak yum. Did you, was that full? Three quarters. That, does that, that doesn't give you like diarrhea or anything? Oh, no. Denny, got, got <clears to throat> steal. I, I do recall you saying that you got a little of the D word with the water kefir <laughs> and maybe you made it wrong, but I'm not familiar, too familiar with water kefir yet. But have you actually home fermented the milk kefir yet? I've never done the milk, no. Okay. So don't associate the word diarrhea with milk kefir okay. for everybody, please. Okay. Oh, because that's you. not a thing. No. It's not a thing. Well, it's it just actually a can heal the diarrhea. diarrhea. It can. Unless people nice. are real toxic. Yeah. And they just need to go slow. Yeah. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're if you got some germs and they're fighting the key for mm-hmm. they well, might. Well, it's just making up like a bit of a sword match, you know, probably. So what that war looks like is diarrhea. There it can. can look different for, for different people. So actually sometimes um you'll get the, the constipation instead at first. Until things regulate. Yeah. Depends what sort of bowel problems you're prone to. Okay. That wasn't my question, actually. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm. I just it got distracted. We my, always love to start Are with we going to good... keep this fireplace in the summer, this picture? It's just so warm and cozy. Yeah. We have a fireplace on a TV behind us in the studio. They probably can see it. Just for the aesthetic. No, they can't see it, Sereni. There is no camera on it. There's a camera on him. And it could be seen. Oh, that's true. There's a camera see, on Danny. Smart, but yeah, go ahead, Dan. Uh, so I'm just curious how you both did over the holidays in oh. terms of dessert. Oh, eating. I had like- a goji berry in my tooth. <laughs> That's how serene and now did. we have yeah. That's the how camera serene on did. me. I feel like I can't quite maneuver the goji berry out properly. I think you should get after it. <laughs> I would. That camera on the like. <laughs> Like, like as we talk, that's the B-roll. But Dan, you want to ask us so you can share too. But okay, no, since no, that's, just, that's what I do. I ask questions so I can like, I have a question for <laughs> you so that I could have my own therapy session. Yeah. Okay, so how did I do? Because we, we know how you, Serene did. Serene nice. always just, well, I'll let her speak for herself. For me, okay. So it was an Thanks. interesting year. I feel like it was, uh, I'm really proud of Pearl this year because she didn't lose her mind with the cinnamon rolls but she did enjoy okay so what happens was i've shared here on the podcast that cinnamon rolls are like kryptonite for me they're your weakness um i don't know the thm healthy ones it's just that all your family brings bad ones christmas i shall actually explain it (laughs) thank you (laughs) yeah in the past uh, because okay so we have a very big traditional kind of almost southern breakfast at my home where the whole family comes together all the grandies all the children and that's our time and we do a huge huge breakfast that's like our big thing and you all wear your pjs yeah we wear our pjs so um this year my precious daughter-in-law mary made the most amazing southern white cinnamon rolls sugar included okay she brought those then my daughter Autumn made the most amazing sourdough teth, oh. no sugar cinnamon Which rolls. Are amazing. She gave me a whole. So there they were on the them. table, and all the other things like the eggs and all the crossover, pretty much healthy things. But there were those two things before me. Which of them should I choose? Okay. Teth? Well, it was Christmas. My precious daughter-in-law Mary made those with love. Okay, with and love. there was Christmas. lots of other people to love them. So what I did, and they were huge. I I got one and I and I cut half, and I put it on my plate, and then I got a full one of autumns because I was eating big. Yeah. And so that's what I did. Because you like volume. I do like volume, and it was Christmas, and yep. so I ate half of a sugar one. Okay. And because I had the other full complete one, I did not lose my mind. I could say to Mary, Mary, okay. these are incredible, and I enjoyed, and they were made with love, and it was part of my beautiful Christmas. Um, and then I ate Autumn's one with all the health and the goodness nourishing my body. And I was so sustained and I didn't lose my mind for the rest of the day. Oh, that's, that's so, so great. Yeah. Glory. What, but now do share about thyself, Danny. Well, is Serene next though? Or? No, uh, Danny. We know how well, she's she done. Well, she flawlessly executed she, she knows, start to finish. We know how Serene does. Yeah, we already, she has never literally. been off plan. There hasn't been a time. Yeah. Well, I mean... Don't say cross crossovers. You do yeah, enjoy. I, I know crossovers are on plan. So we why go to her for this? Yeah, there's no need. There's Good no job, need. Serene. This yeah. holiday season again. 
Again, gold star. Teacher's pet, in fact. Are you your mother's favorite? I thought so. Yes, I breastfed actually. Till I was five, yeah, actually, you asked, you asked all us kids, we would say that, but. Yeah, no. Serena's fave. <laughs> she doesn't act like she's fave, though, at all. Ever. But do share because I've actually got some meat coming today. Yeah, okay. Well, um, I blew it. Oh, you did? No, no, I don't want to say I blew it. Here's. Jeremiah wants somebody to blow along from with from the him. crowd. <laughs> no, I didn't blow it. I think, um, you, you know how cinnamon rolls are, are your weakness? Yeah. I have a weakness called Coca-Cola Classic. Ah! No. And the fact that it has the word classic in yeah, it makes, makes it, it a... even harder for me because it's a classic. Because I like Deceptive classic Deceptive advertising. Things. You can't see through that? I, I know. It's nothing classic about it in reality. <laughs> but... It- the thing is, is if I'm the somewhere... loneliness. No, but Serene, I understand that a lot of people like my, my son-in-law and stuff, they feel like that's the good part of America. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like the good old Which days. Son, yeah. So I can yeah. take him off of no, my will. No, not my son. My son-in-law. It's the good part John's of America. Face. And, they, face. and they, don't even, they don't sense the sugar. It's just the classic. John didn't even know anyone was looking at him. He's just wincing in the corner. But about. Do, yeah. Do Sovereign John, us, you're do, wincing along with me. Yeah, but let him tell Serene. Okay. Let him share his hard. <laughs> enough shit. of your wincing. Uh, enough of the poison, but even the name. I mean, let's go there, John. Serene's nose furled. <laughs> enough. I didn't furl, so you share it to me, Danny. Here's Danny. the thing. I won't ever buy Coca-Cola Classic. Right. It will never see my cart. But if I'm somewhere mm. and, and oh, and I don't, I don't fall by the two liters either. Oh, because when those two liters crack great. open, that first pour might be fine. As soon as it hits the ice or as soon as it's sat there for a minute, nah, not not interested either. Yeah. You like a schwepp, don't you? A schwepp? And, and in, in its own bubble. bottle, right? Its own if little some, curved bottle. If, if, there, if someone pulls an ice cold glass bottle out of yeah. ice and they go, yeah. I'm done. He's all, <laughs> he's all pulled by the advertising. You know, you go see the, to the cinema and you hear oh, yeah. that shaka through all of oh, the that speakers one all me. around you. That one gets me too, and I don't. I won't. You're running. at the altar call of the Coca Cola. Yeah, I, I sort of nice. do rush to the cinematic altar call. Yeah, on the cinema, that one's hard, man. It's bubbling and it's all uh, ASMR, and it fills the screen with Coke. Put you a know? kombucha yeah. right there, right, oh. right, John. A homemade sovereign kombucha in a copper vessel. Chica, chica. <laughs> I mean, you've got volcano and Schwepp. like okay. it's just. Yeah, Bucci. Yeah, fire. so um, I was uh, at a Mexican restaurant. And um, on Christmas Day, no, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I know you love your heritage, but <laughs> yeah, not that, that much uh, over the holiday season. And I was having water, and a friend was in town, he just moved here, and he had a um tall and it was in a Coca Cola glass, Ooh. one of the big, mm-hmm. wide mouth glasses, and it was full to the top with ice. <laughs> Is this health podcast? Gonna just, be listen, all crazy? just let him, just let him share. Wow. Stop you butting could tell in. That these Mexicans knew what they were doing with the Coke. Okay. And they do. Do they all have like hair pushed back, suave, like you, like you've got the hair, like yeah. I just realized what he's done. Okay. But we need to get to the end of the story, Serene. So let's listen. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to know because I hope there's a, an, a good ending. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there is. But um, <laughs> oh, so that's what I'm saying. So he ordered a second Coke. And by yeah. the time he got to his second Coke, what it did to me mentally, I went, well, if he can have two, mm-hmm. I can, I'm going to be sane and now I can order yeah. one. This was like after the meal was over and I was like, and I haven't had a dessert. Mm-hmm. And so it's the holiday. I just, this whole train of thoughts came and let me tell you, it was the best Coke that I've ever had in my life because I haven't had one in so long mm-hmm. and it was, it was so, so good. And oh, John and I can hardly have No, but I'm more. saying if that if that was your Christmas off plan thing, that's okay. Or did it derail you? That's what I'm trying to find out. Or were you just able to have that and say, hey, occasionally or on celebrations, I could do yeah, this. I just say that pop is a different sinister deal than just a quarter of a of a cinnamon roll. And I'm telling you why, because it's liquid carb, number one. And how many teaspoons of sugar Serene, goes into you're pop? Coming, 48. I, okay, 40. But, but still, Serene, <laughs> yeah. you're coming from a place where, Violent amount of sugar. where you've never drank pop. You, 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 People are listening today. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm talking to the addicts. They may have been free for five years. You know, it's like pop anonymous. No, I know, but... I guess we're saying different things That's where um, my thing might have been to have a bit of cinema or someone else's thing like Danny might be to have that I Coke. know. Okay. And I'm I'm coming from the extreme side, pure side, so just bear with me. But to me, it's like, okay, you finally get off cigarettes. 
you're never really going to go back and have a cigarette on a Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there are treats I am. that are off plan and then there's just downright poison. You know what'll get me too? Is somebody smoking a cigar. Yeah. I'm like, oh, now Dan. I'm, okay, but I'm just fix admitting. The pod, bro. I'm, just, fix I'm the trying pod. to fix the podcast. Okay, okay. So right now this podcast is broken, so let's fix it. <laughs> Can I pray um, over the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, was that your you said you blew it, but did you blow it or were you able to enjoy that and then get back to your healthy earth food ways? I blew it. Because you're holding shame for that. I blew it uh, multiple times oh, okay. throughout. Do you the- know why? Because that pop did it. Well, and let it, me well, tell it does, you, though. It does affect signals in your brain for the sugar and the and the, and the uh, Pop Anonymous. He has to go to Pop Anonymous meetings now. Yeah. I mean, and and John reminded me that, like, like imagine, like, 10 spoonfuls of white sugar no, 40, into your 40 mouth. 40 something no, it's teaspoons. Not, it's not 40. Grams. 50 grams. Yeah. So, on, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, around 10. And the can's pretty small. Not those Imagine putting thing. ten tablespoons of white sugar in yeah. your mouth. I mean, cardiac arrest. And I mean, especially that little quarter of a cinnamon roll. It no, was I made from scratch. Yeah. Okay, that probably had like four teaspoons. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So a big, um, big difference. No, I'm. I'm just sort of like. Um, Were you able to get back your mind back? Were you able to hop back on the? the just now. Okay. Took have I regained sanity? And what happened was, I just kept bloating. Okay. And bloating and bloating, and I would just have no. The podcast is saved. Yeah, I knew. This I would was have coming. no energy, yeah. and I would do it again, and then I would bloat, and I would be like, "These aren't my goals." And then <laughs> I would think, "I know," and I would drink my new kefir water that I've been making. No your kefir water was causing you to have some explosions because you just no. That was for a friend. I was asking oh, okay. for. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, you've never exploded. Never. Not in the wool pack. Okay, we were, okay context clean Italian everyone. Man. We have this podcast thread where we all talk, you know, together about what time we're meeting or just random things. And Danny asked for a friend. If could keep a water on our chat. Cause, on our chat. On our chat. Cause explosive diarrhea asking for a friend. But you were drinking the Coke around the same time. Yeah, I was. And and so like um I kept thinking that my good decisions would outweigh my bad. Uh, and uh, and I, I learned that that doesn't happen in the realm of physics. Your good decisions don't, or at least they didn't for me in the terms of like my bloated gut. Yeah. And then I started getting this, this rollover, you know, and then it mm. grew and then I was watching it. So no longer was I just growing kefir on my counter. I was growing a belly over <laughs> the flap of my pants. Well, that's funny. Serene has a point in that. It pop a soda out of all things, out of all, even like stronger beer. than food. It's like you get pop. Belly. It's like exactly. It's like the sh- the intensity of the sugar and how quickly it reaches your bloodstream. The stress level is so much faster to the undoing of your health than even food. Well, so. because right. you know those sugar spikes at extreme levels like that, you know they raise your cortisol, your stress hormone, and cortisol makes the added. Whatever you're going to store goes straight but to the But you know middle. what's funny? We're talking like this podcast is like right after the holidays when there's probably going to launch in March. But hey, but who hey cares? people. But we're so professional. But I just want to say this. Because I've got but, some meat But to I bring. do want to bring before uh, the meat as okay. an appetite, as an hors d'oeuvre, a hors d'oeuvres. An hors d'oeuvres. Um, who's my, is that my daughter? You want to tell her that I'm in the pods? That's great that the ring's um, still on during the podcast. Yeah, because we're so professional, right? Yeah. No, but I do want people to hear us that we are all about being able to. I mean, there's so many healthy treats on our plant but we're able to go and have a piece of aunt marge's pecan pie sure 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 right but i just think there are levels like like john and i agree and i think pearl you too and now i think dan you agree i think we're just ha- happy agreeers here that there are levels it's like you don't pick up your cigarette ever again yeah so you don't pick up your pop no you, again. you you said it you paused with a question mark you added a question mark you were like <laughs> you it's like for for sure you don't pick up your cigarette and then you stopped and looked at me and waited yeah. And I was like, just in case. I was you like, sure, up sure, the sink sure, sure. At the same time with the Coke bottle. I mean, don't they go hand in hand? I know. Uh, it's like I do Cokes. one little thing. Like I drink a Coke, and now she's unsure about. You go unsure. to the Maytag laundry, you know, and, and you've got the the outside the Maytag. Everyone that doesn't have a washing machine has got their cigarette, and they're, they're. Don't worry, I don't have. I have had many years without a washing and a, machine and a tab. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have three questions that I have thought of. Do you want to sip my tea? Why do you want? Why do you want me to sit? Because I want you to taste it and see what you think. 
Okay, just as I was announcing yeah. my title. Yeah, wet the whistle before. It's a little sweet. Put too much stevia in it. But okay, just what the, sort of tea is it? Milky. It's called Serene. I got it in my stocking. <gasps> it's called Serene. It, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's peaceful mm. herbs. It is peaceful. Is there a little lavender in there? Yeah, and there's ashwagandha. Oh, and I can't stand stuff. lavender. I don't like lavender. Oh, oh did drink. you like this? Um, it, I, I gave it a, I think, a B minus just because of the lavender. Lavender is... I may not have lavender. I love the name. I don't like to taste lavender. I like it in the air, like the smell, but mm. ooh, drinking it well, tastes like... I could grow to like that. Hey, I could grow to like that. I used to hate her yuck yum. That's why it's called yuck yum. I was like, yuck. Okay, give me some more. <laughs> yum. <laughs> I'll be asking for more of that soon. Um... There are three questions I realize that none of us should ever ask ourselves. And I want to go through these today because I realized throughout my life that I was asking myself these super dumb questions. And now when they come into my head, I'm like, oh, I don't ask myself that. It's just like, blip, you're out of there. So I don't even give it time. I don't give it any of my thought space. They are never to be asked. So let me start with the first one. This is kind of related to more to movement, to exercise, but probably to food prep too. So we're going to get really practical. And we worked out these questions to Gives. Yes, yes, we did. But it was my idea. Yeah, it was her idea to ask the questions. It was. But Serene. Ten points tick for Pearl. But you're the one that helped me with this. Well, I don't need the ten points, but I just think this first question is something that's very key in my life too. Yes, because you actually helped me with this. Because okay, I was asking my question and, and yeah. I was actually going to tell the story of that. Tell the but, story. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first question is, do I feel like doing this? Okay. So as I've mentioned a time or two here, I've been weight training, trying to regain my lean body mass that I lost through age and menopause and all of that stuff. Every, and trying oh, to be light. Yeah, and all of you are losing it if you're not gaining it, right? If you're not strength training and if you're not… If you're past 23, you're yeah, losing it. Pretty much. Unless you're So let's training. just, it's a given. We're all losing it. And so I, and so for a while I was like, okay, well, I, I eat protein and I, you know, I, I do, I've always done my exercise ever since I was 20. I've done exercise, but I wasn't lifting heavy enough stuff to actually rebuild my muscle. You're lifting cans. Yeah. And because I thought I was kind of a light… I thought I didn't think I was yeah. one of those heavy girls, heavy yeah. lifting girls. So then I realized, oh my goodness, no, I have lost lean muscle. It was knowledge that told me. And so I'm going to regain it. So that involves workouts where I lift heavy. She wanted to k- get the metabolism back of her youth. Yeah. And that's how you get your metabolism back of your youth. But, Strength but training. one day you, you I had to go up. Your muscle eats everything. And it was glute day, uh, right? I've been following um, Carolyn Gervin on her Iron Series workout. And it was glute day. And I just, all morning, I just kept thinking, oh my goodness, it's glute lady. But do I really want to do that? Do, do I want to go do glute day? And every part of me did not want to do that and I kept asking myself the question do I want to do that the answer kept being no oh but it's I like have when to you do ask that children if they yes. want broccoli and I was miserable because I kept asking myself the question and the answer was obviously no who wants to go do glute day it hurts okay so then I said to Serene oh I finally went and did it but I was kind of a bit miserable all morning because I put so much focus on the question and I have to go do that. And then, oh, I said to Serene, you know, it was really hard getting my workout done this morning because I kept asking myself, do I want to do this? And she's like, what? You asked yourself that, Pearl? What? I never ask myself if I want to do a workout. That's the one thing you never do. Now, since that day, it changed my life, Serene. Yay. I never abide the question. I put it out of my head. Ask yourself if you want to do it. You just put it in the slot and you do it. That's right. You put it in the slot. Cha-ching. Yeah. You don't even think about it. That's it's changed good, so much misery from my head, Danny. Huge. Because yeah, I, I always ask myself and I never do it. Of course I don't feel like it. <laughs> no, you no. just do it like you're a zombie, that you're just a, a robot yeah. following orders. Yeah, you're following orders. You, you just got the information. The information you've assented to the knowledge. You've ticked the box. You're like, yes, this is I'm about to what I need. right now. And so, yeah. so then you just say, body, you follow this information like a robot. How was it that I was 51 and didn't know that you weren't supposed to ask that question? I think most of us ask ourselves things all day long that we shouldn't. Yeah. And, you know, so you can ask yourself, do I really want to have to do prep tonight? Do I really want to have to include a salad tonight? Do I really want oh, to? Oh, that's something you never ask your husband. Well, not my <laughs> husband. Whenever I say, hey, baby, you, you want to have a salad tonight or do you want to have just a bowl of chili? You never ask the salad. You give the salad. Just it happens. And you just yeah. put it there like he's like the honored recipient of the <laughs> gift you gave him. He's like, oh, 
oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you can't not eat the salad. Your <laughs> wife's just, just right there, here. like the yeah. gift, like. <sighs> But um, but yeah, no, if I ask him, he will always say no to the salad. So now I want to ask you something, Serene. When did you learn this concept that has changed my life of never to ask that question? Well, because I'm a bit of a control freak uh, and, and OCD, I think, in a healthy way, if you uh, can. Well, well, maybe in parts of your life yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah it wasn't you're... for a while. But my brain wouldn't let me not exercise. It was a box that I was going to tick because I, because I just, I, I, I was a Spartan. Yeah. And Pearl has taught me to enjoy my life a lot more. And so I appreciate her friendship because of that. I needed her to cut the edges off of my personality, the sharp um, Spartan edges. Um, so so I was always going to do it. I was always going to do it. But I did used to ask the question. And like Pearl, the whole hours running up to it were filled with um, almost uh, a nervousness, like I was about to go on stage and do something I didn't want to do. You know how mm-hmm. you're – Oh, you're going to sing a song yeah. and you know your voice yeah. is not like in top gear. You know, you got a little sinus cold and you know you can't hit the note you're going out to sing. And there's yeah. no way you're going to make it. That feeling, uh-huh. that little tension, I would get that for hours. And it was like almost, I think, undoing of the health results of the exercise because I felt cortisol for three hours before I did mm. it. Almost like a, a nervous um, tension, almost like I had coffee and didn't have coffee, like that, the jitters. I get yeah. the jitters. And that's a cortisol thing. Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know. I just, for me, if I ask myself that question, um, some people ask themselves the question and then they just don't do the exercise because the answer is, no, that will be annoying and that's going to be uncomfortable. But I'd ask <laughs> the question and still know I'd have to do it. Danny's hand I have a up. question. Can you just have like a cortisol imbalance and it's not triggered by any fear or... We will get to that. But back to the point, we will get to that. Can we get back to that? But I just want to say something about this exercise thing just really quickly. But it's a good point, Danny. Um, Since I haven't asked that question, Pearl. And how many years has that been? Oh, over a decade. Since I told me that 10 years ago. Since I haven't asked that question, I don't get any nervousness about any form of exercise. And actually, I super enjoy my exercise. Super enjoy it. And it was kind of like the thing I learned from you, Pearl, to just enjoy life more. And, and, and so the thing that was making me not enjoy it was not the exercise, really, because I had such great feelings afterwards, too. And there's parts of the exercise during that I enjoyed. So the really only thing I didn't enjoy was the, was the lead up. Yeah, the lead up. It's lead the up. worst. So part I have just hours muted, muted the lead up. Yeah, you just turn it on to mute. The break in's tough, too. Like my first five push ups, uh, right. I'm miserable. Yeah, right, right. It's just five push ups. Once, once I'm broken in, I can just crank it. So yeah. true. Like, once no the sweat deal. comes, yeah. it's once like, let's break get the sweat. sweaty all the way now. And yeah, I, you yeah, know, I'll what was dive in. really interesting was I put, um, you know, on our treasure hunters group, I was like, so what, hey, let's all share what gets us to We'll get to back do to your movement. thing though. Yes, we'll thing. remember the yeah, cortisol. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be rude. What you gets were. us to do movement? Tell us, you know, what, what has been successful in your life? What thought pathways? And one woman said, I never tell myself I have to do the whole thing. Sort of like the one push-up. She said, I'm going to say, I'm going to go upstairs or I'm going to go to my workout room. And, I'm, and she does videos. I'm going to turn out and I'm just going to do five minutes of a workout video. She's like, it's never five minutes. I finish it. Yeah, But I yeah, just say, yeah. oh, it's just going to be a little bit. <clears throat> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and she's right in a sense because it's just five minutes of breaking in. Yeah. It's that's the break. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's the worst part. And then once you're broken in. Oh, you're fine. That's actually great to say, I'm just going to work out for five minutes, tricking yourself, knowing yeah. you're going to keep going. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a different you once you break the sweat. Yeah, it, yep. It's, like right. a, new it's mind. a different you. Yeah. And then the other thing that, that helps me too, and um, I've shared this a little bit on the Treasure Hunters Pearl where you posted that. Yeah. Did a little bit of a live about it. My second thing that's really helped me, besides from muting, and that's been the biggest thing, muting yeah. the whole talk a- around exercise. I don't have any discussions about it in my head. It's just to me now there's no one talking about it in my head yeah. anymore. I just have the knowledge that it's the greatest thing I need to do. That's it. Yeah. It's all muted. But I – as soon as they now it won't work for people that are going off to work, right? And who are going to have to exercise maybe before breakfast or whatever. But for me, because I do a lot of my before lunchtime at home, um, as soon as I get up, I put my shoes on that that match that exercise I'm doing that day. Oh, because I don't exercise to about ten thirty. But as soon as I get up at six thirty or seven, if it's my weightlifting day, I put my weightlifting shoes on. My See, you're shoes- one of those people. And so my feet are telling me for the next 
three hours, Serene, you're about that's to it. That's walk Atomic in. Habits right there, that book. That's like exactly wow. facilitate your yeah. habit. But like she's, 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 one of those, she's one of those people. And I know though. I can't take these off. Until I've done the workout, because I'm not going to wear my weightlifting shoes and not work, you know, out. and not, and no, but go to a meeting later on or, or yeah. whatever. So I see those and they just tell me what I'm going to do. I just follow my shoes. And then on my sprint days, um, as soon as I get up, I put my sneakers on, my runners, yeah. and I know that. But, okay. So, Danny, she is one of those people. She came to that on her own, but we can learn from those people. They, they, those people write books and shit, have podcasts. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's like, you guys know who David Goggins is? I've heard the name. I mean, this man. It is just on record. He he has the Guinness Book World Record for the most push ups. He sorry, pull ups. He did four thousand wow. thirty six pull ups in under seventeen hours. Oh my goodness. That's like what was his body type though? He must be like exactly what you picture to be able to pull that off. Right, because my tall husband, no matter how muscular he would get, to pick that big body up so many times, it's now like he, they're not going to be on the Guinness. He went from a big overweight dude to a shredded, like picture perfect, classic specimen of like Greek masculine strength. With I mean, pull ups, yeah, and so he holds the pull up record. He's uh, he runs hundreds of miles, toenails coming off. Uh, he'll stop mid run for a chiropractor to snap his ankles back in oh place. My Keep mm. running. And he's just known for this type of mentality. Like right. he does things that are sort of superhuman. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then every day, if you follow his Instagram, it's him running, looking sideways at the camera, talking about how you need to get after it and kill that inner complainer. He uses oh, yeah. a different word. Uh-huh. <laughs> you yeah. know, that inner complainer in you that that uh, is sabotaging your life. And because he exists, like I'm not going to go David Goggins ever. Right. But because he exists as what's possible and how mm-hmm. you could think like he's needed in the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he stands at the gate for, for us mm-hmm. and, and does, he suffers on our behalf. Not that yeah. Serene's suffering, but I'm saying <laughs> there's, there's those people who can like a machine execute their thing morning, noon, and night all throughout the year, holidays observed, they can do it. And they stand as mm-hmm. these, P- what's possible yeah and we need them because we, we can glean it. from and them another thing though that helps me and probably nobody else maybe maybe you can't do this but maybe you can like if you have any say in the way your day is ordered like pearl you try and do it too i'm like pearl if we're going to do meetings they're yeah, always got to be after lunch yeah because in the morning i have this schooling with the children yeah. I have this this and that and i slot my exercise in that a.m before 12 and i know if i fill that with meetings for my life, yeah, it's not going to happen. So Definitely. I mean, everybody can't do that. And then they would change. They would do their own thing. Okay, yeah. so you know, when I get home in the evening, it's going to be slotted mm-hmm. in, or you know, I'm going to go to bed early. So I, every a.m. at six, I'm doing. You know, but I right. think knowing when your time is, yes, don't just don't. I think just pe- when you're willy nilly and say at some moment today I will catch the right no, time. No, you've got to have a slot. <laughs> you slot it. Oh, if you say I'm going to exercise at some point today, the worst. Yes. You're not going to exercise at some point today. It you has put to it have on a your slot. calendar. You know, you got to have a time frame. It doesn't have to be super like at, you know, 1034 a.m. But, but mid-morning, it, it I It needs exercise. to be a slot. Yeah. So yeah. You, you put on your shoes for the right day. But so when you put on your uh, Birkenstocks and socks. Like, That's after of exercise, man. Where are you headed? Okay. I'm heading to the pod. Okay. I'm headed to the pod. Okay. I'm headed to town. Okay. I'm headed to to do hey we're 28 minutes but in, i do want to say this really two more questions right good but can i just ask. say one more thing yes. just one more thing it's your podcast. Just, a, just just another thing that that helps me too and everyone knows this it's just so simple but i think it's just kind of like dialing out the distractions that um kind of lose your focus and then dialing in those things that put you in the the groove like so for me it sounds awful because i love my children so much but when children are walking in with fights and saying he stole my rubber band and blah yeah. blah 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 I could be in the middle of a squat and I just want to drop the whole barbell. Like it's just all my oomph goes, right? Yeah. So it's so terrible. If I was a real good organized mother, I would have them doing like, you know, gluing um, pop stickers together and doing arts and crafts, but I'm not organized enough. So I have, it's the only time my, my young children are allowed to watch the screens. Yeah. Is, and so they, they watch their little screens while yeah. I'm working out and it's just like so not a great babysitter. But to me, the priority of me getting my workout done, I'm a better mother to them for the rest of the day. Yeah. And so they have their screen time 
Yeah. Hats off to these chicks doing crafts with the kids, though, oh, hands right? Hands off. I never did hands the crafts. Hands off. Dude, and like, I, had, I tried like the David to do Goggins the crafts. Of yeah. their world. And the yes. music. That's how I zone in. Like, I, I'm not one of those people that wears the, I can't have anything on my head or I feel claustrophobic while I'm sure. exercising, but I what but I have my little ear? phone. Uh, I, to me, I can't. That's horrid, yeah. Yeah, but I have my phone and like. Uh, okay, but can I get to my next yes. question? Because but don't you think, though, that music makes a diff? Oh, I it makes don't, a diff. I don't listen to the music. For working out? Oh. I just follow my little videos, whatever music. Yeah, well, her music's gone. Okay, she's got it already. Well, that works. Yeah. But um, okay. So the next question was, what about his cortisol question? Put that to the end of the pod. No, Uh, just a fast answer. Okay, the fast answer was yes. Can you have excess cortisol? Um, more than usual yes if you're under a lot of stress if you think stressful thoughts if you lose your sex hormones like if you're estrogen if you're a woman and your estrogen declines or, your testosterone or you're even your testosterone declines if you're a man because then your adrenal glands have to take over so you churn out more cortisol and it kind of sits on your belly so yes the three things to do about that are uh stop thinking stressful thought pathways that's number one really yes. because that turns yeah. out cortisol and exercise put on those exercise shoes and just like follow through with your yes, exercise and eat your that... carbs if you do not eat carbs your cortisol rises of course oh. i said exercise but over exercising yeah. raises your cortisol i mean if you're going for like a full day without actually they did this study it's really interesting and they followed a bunch of perimenopause or women who tend to have excess cortisol because the sex hormones are coming down and they followed them and they found out those that did not eat breakfast but did not have a carb at their breakfast too so the ones that ate a carb at breakfast and did eat breakfast did the best cortisol. But the ones that did not eat breakfast had a cortisol spike that elevated all day long and wouldn't come down. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that's especially for women because women have to be fed or their cortisol rises. Got to feed Men them. are a little different. Some men can go without food for a little longer than women, but you got to feed a woman. You know, Garfield said, love me, feed me, say you'll never leave me. Mm, there you go, profound. Danny. And, uh, I thought he summed up uh, yeah. what a woman wants. <laughs> hey, the Pretty second profound. question you never ask yourself is, is all this worth it? Oh. So I think so many people ask that question when they're doing things for their health, mm-hmm. like they're making, they're doing that prep in the kitchen and maybe they kind of don't, aren't loving the prep because they haven't form thought pathways that this is actually living life this is the ultimate part maybe of they've life. joined a, a milk co-op to make their kefir or something and yeah. then they're having to do the collection of all the 15 <laughs> families on that one day and it's like is this all worth okay it? so some things aren't <laughs> worth it but i say if this is about your health and if you're not overdoing things like i think sometimes it's not worth it if you're putting too much busy stuff into your life for your health so streamline it don't overcomplicate things. But then once you've got your basic sweatpants meals, like I can do this over and over again. Yes, it takes a little bit of prep. You never, ever ask yourself from that time, is it worth it? Right. Because the oh, the question, there's already an answer to that question. Right. It is absolute 100%. Yes, it's worth it. And if you don't do it, there are repercussions. So you choose to never ask yourself that question. Right. I totally agree. And in going back to the beginning of your question saying sometimes you sometimes you ask yourself and you think, okay, yeah, yeah. this is too much. But that's when you're you're we- wheedling out the yeah, weeds I, I of what you meant. The, yes. the, the essence, okay, is looking after my health. Like is eating food like, honoring, uh, body honoring food choices worth it? Never right. ask yourself so, that so again. My yes, point, my point is. being is: is <laughs> exercise worth it? Yes. Is getting a gym membership, and some people oh, love right. it, but is getting a gym membership, and I'm 30 minutes away, yeah. driving 30 minutes through traffic, then working out for 45 minutes, um, driving back through right. traffic, and and like I'd be thinking to myself: is it worth to take an extra hour out of my family and out of everything just to be part of this gym? Right. To me, in my life, I'd say no, it's not worth it. Like right. slowly buy a dumbbell every two months. You know? Right, but for some people that need that social aspect yeah. and that's where they get to be with their then friends and exercise, it. that is worth right. it. So I think… But the overarching question you never ask yourself, is no. exercise worth it? No, or is eating healthy worth it? Yes. You just don't. It is going to take some It's already prep. been answered. You, yes, it's already been yeah. answered. Don't ask it again. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. <laughs> it will ruin you. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. It is. I love it's it. It's going to ruin you, that question. Yes. You can tr- figure out the fine details of what complications are worth it. Yeah, like but trying to essence. sort out a fight between yeah. your husband and you and like, no, you got to go through the, you know, like you got to, you got to 
go through the misunderstandings. Yeah. You know, and, and, and go through the technicality of the conversation so that they can hear your heart or whatever. And sometimes it feels like it gets more messy before it gets yeah. clean. You don't ask yourself if it's worth it because it's so worth it. Yeah. Right. That extra time and effort yeah. is so worth it. So then uh, my number three question is, and this happens to me a lot, but I'm going to break it. Um, do I have to keep doing this? This happens to me when I'm kind of in the middle of a workout, especially those first five minutes, Danny. And it feels really foreign to what I really want to be doing, which is sitting on a lovely couch, drinking a lovely warm cup of coffee. My, my serene tea. Yes. Yeah, something like that, but opposite to whatever I'm doing now, which is pushing my body to limits that it kind of doesn't naturally want to go to. Do you know when the question comes? When you're in the hardest push yeah. of your weight workout or you're at the end of your glycogen, like you've got no energy left in your muscles and you're at the last two seconds of your sprint or yeah. something. Or when you're in the dying cockroach position or something on your workout, that's when your brain wants to ask that question. When you're in the most pain, it wants to say, imagine yourself doing it the next Friday yes. and the next time it's slotted in, you never look at those future slots. No, because I, never. I, I think to myself during those times and I ask myself, I have to do this again tomorrow or... And then, and then I'm going to do it Thursday. I am nuts. Like if I think about the question while I'm doing it, I think, no, I never, ever, ever want to do this again. And now my brain yells that sufficient today is the evil thereof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But that's why you should never allow yourself to do it. Because at the end of that workout or at the end of whatever you are struggling with, you feel amazing. You feel like, yes, I do want to do that again and, on Thursday. And if that question gets accidentally asked, right, yeah. and, and we don't like it when it gets asked and we, and we try and shut the question down, but if it gets out in our brain before we shut it down, yeah, I always tell myself, Serene, this is like less than an hour. Like, yeah. I mean, always. How many hours are you going to be sitting on your tuft right. for the rest yeah. of the day? Yeah. You know, you have to rebuttal with it. Well, will I have to do this tomorrow? Well, you'll be sitting for a yeah. 12 hours tomorrow. You know, you could easily scroll on your phone for 45 minutes or 20 yeah. minutes or however long your workout turns out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Colossally wasting time. And I know, then, but it just feels like, man, you just like, I'm putting so much, it feels like time has stopped and you are doing this, you know, kind of in a way painful thing. You are forcing your muscles to do things and you think, I never, ever want to continue this. It's nuts. It's craziness. You know what? What's funny is those are all great questions for stuff you shouldn't be doing. Yes. Yeah. Like, right. and your brain do I want to keep doing them. this? Yeah. But your brain never, never asks have. that. Yeah, never it doesn't. Ask. Yeah, it's, it just never yeah, does. Yeah, like, because if I'm sitting scrolling on the phone wasting time, my brain never tells me, do I have to keep doing this? Is this what you want? <laughs> yeah. Is this what you want? <laughs> yes. But, you know, think about the things that you do every day that you just know have, you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, brushing your teeth. I really don't enjoy it, but I don't allow myself, my brain to say, do I have to do this tomorrow and then the next day? Because if I did, I'd start to get depressed in life. I'd just do it. Like the you, knowledge of the rotting teeth is just clear enough in yeah, your brain. Yeah, you have to do that. It's okay, making my bed too. So now that I'm a bed maker, and I've, guys, I've just been really growing into this. Those of you that have listened to the party for many years know that I was a baby stepper into it and I failed and I failed and failed until I took on the identity and then started making my bed. But even when I was a bed maker, I went several days in between sometimes, but I'm like, no, I'm still a bed maker. I'm not quitting. I'm going back to it. But now I'm a, a true bed maker where it's such a part of me when I see my unmade bed, I'm like, how, how on earth did that happen? I'm a bed maker and I just go make it straight away. Mm -hmm. But at first I asked myself when I was in the midst of making that bed, I hated it. I don't know. I just don't like making beds. You say, right? is it worth it? Is it? Do I have to do this every single day? I'm just going to mess it up again. Yeah. And then till I stopped asking myself the dumb question and just did it. I mean, I just like make no room in my brain for the questions that would inhibit this really good thing in my life because it's a good thing in my life. It makes me feel grand about myself. And guess what? I, I sent this to my son. I was scrolling through Instagram the other day. And there was this thing that said, um, people who make their bed are, I think it was 2,000 times more likely to become millionaires or something. And my son's all about, you know, making money and things like that. I sent that to him. He's like, oh, Mary and I decided we're making our beds. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so so funny. he went and made it and then she made it the next day. Yeah. But it does give you a sense of, um, 
put that your life is not just a shamble. For me, mm-hmm. when I see my make my made bed, I think my life is kind of put together. It helps me. I don't know what it is. You might not need it. I don't put this on anyone. Exercise does that to me. When I feel but, like I'm walking up the stairs and I feel the muscle that has yeah. been worked, like you feel the tension that's left over in it, like you feel yes, that, love that. that work, I think to myself, oh, for the rest of the day, I'm a mountain mover. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> your posture, st- you stand better. Yes, you do. You are a different person. You are strong. You think strong. Yep. You, it's just... And so for me, uh, I mean, it, it, it's worth it for, for the after, the after effect that goes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. But I, I love your whole concept, Pearl, with all these three questions. We mute the noise mm. that doesn't work for us, right? Yes. Stupid questions. Yeah. I find when I get up early, like super early, shower, get ready, and then I'm just absurdly ready early. Mm-hmm. I feel like a king by like 9 a.m. <laughs> yeah. because I've accomplished so much mm-hmm. with no distraction. And and I'm just like, I have, of course, I ruin it because I'm like, I've done all I should do today. <laughs> <laughs> and at nine o'clock, I'm like, time to watch movies. <laughs> so I See, literally we, will do that. This is a funny thing. Like our mom, like, because we enjoy watching things on a screen at night, but our mom did not. Uh, she raised that us. That was a long way to she say always, movie. She always said, <laughs> no, screen, no, screen, on no movie that night. or TV <laughs> in the day. So our thing was we could watch things at night, but the day is yes. not If it's light outside, for TV or movie. Yeah. unless you are yeah. almost in the grave, the screen doesn't go on in the day. Yeah, and we grew up with it. And now, like, my husband's like, come, you know, Saturday afternoon, come watch a movie with me, Pearl. And I'm like, oh, but, I, but it's daytime. Chris, <laughs> don't do that. Yes. I, I mean, it's far. It's I gone can't. to our family, too. I yeah. can't do it. My children can't do it. Yeah. Did you guys fight your mom over media when you were younger? Or was it just a um, There was no media. Was there? It was mean, like a phone on the wall. A <laughs> big rotary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes we'd want to come home from school, remember, and watch cartoons. Watch the Brady we Bunch. Would, I remember that. Yeah, Charles in Charge. I think about five, sometimes we'd be allowed to watch the Brady Bunch or something. But the day, the day, daylight hours, you weren't watching things. And I kind of love it. I kind of love being that way now where I've kind of learned to relax at night, but the day is for getting stuff done. Are, mm-hmm. Did you feel like the weird kids in the group, though, when you were younger? I mean, or did you ever notice it? Yeah. Oh, I felt cool. Yeah. I mean, I liked I, I was, liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Because mom always didn't give us just the rule. She gave us like, like instead of like watching people on a screen doing amazing stuff, you're going to be the one yeah. doing amazing stuff. She so spoke she, life into us. Yeah. Like almost too much like, life. Like you're going to be so, you're so amazing. All the things you're going to accomplish. And she so, would write you know. on the toilet walls. <laughs> nice. You know, the world awaits to see what comes out of 18 Welby Street. Like and, that and was so, our dress. Yeah. I'm gonna write it on my mirror at home. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, that. So I don't even know how we got onto TV <laughs> and all of that. But I think I feel like we're done. Don't yeah. ask yourself those three dumb questions. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs>